that a lot of people are learning remotely or don't have access to the same equipment and experience that they usually would and I wanted to share some of my knowledge and process and love of making things in fiberglass. It's such a versatile and pliable material as far as ideas. I can make sculptures, I can make furniture. So I wanted to go through the entire process from mold making to finished product of one of the things that I'm really excited about, which is my tea table. I've shown it in a couple other videos. It hasn't been my first priority, so it's taken me a little bit longer, but essentially I've started with my blank, which is I've made exactly the tea table that I want as far as shape, size, and the finished texture in foam and drywall compound. From there, I have sealed it. Then you can see the blue tape is actually a parting line that I've cut into the blank. So I'll be making the top part of the mold first, which I'll walk you through. And to do that, I have, after I've added my parting line, you can see I've just shimmed up everything around it so that everything's supported. Um, and I want to support that that blue ring because it's just made of like a thick paper and then covered in tape so it's sealed. And since I'm going out onto the blue, I do not want that to collapse under the weight. So all around, I've made sure it's very, very supported. So I'm going to begin with a few layers of just the resin. That'll make sure that the texture that is in contact with the mold is super smooth. I don't have any texture from the fiberglass. These are also the most delicate layers because essentially how it goes on to the piece will really reflect how the outcome of the mold is. Now that I've spent time building up with fiberglass, I'm going to do my last layer. And you can see I have patchworked it from different strips. I try and use all of the scrap fiberglass that I have as to not waste anything. And that usually goes into my molds because for the pieces that I use, I try and make it one strip to keep everything flat and perfect, but patchwork a lot for the molds and I've just been building up with the fiberglass and resin. After I lay everything out, I will wet the fiberglass so that it's fully soaked. And then after that is cured, I will add a wax layer on top. This just makes sure all of the layers underneath are fully cured so that I can build the other parts of the mold.
I want the mold to have a pretty specific thickness. I need it to be thick enough that it's really strong. But it also has to keep a flexibility to it so that I can take the piece out of the mold. One of my favorite properties of fiberglass is that it's pretty strong while being really lightweight. finished the top side of the mold and flipped it over. Now I'm going to remove my paper parting line, which was that circle of blue, and then seal the bottom half. I do have a slight overhang on the parting line here, but after I finish this side of the mold, I will cut so that everything is smooth and even. So that's not something I'm concerned about right now. This is the bottom of the tea table and I have it in all three different stages right now. I sectioned it off into three parts for the bottom so that there are no undercuts and I can remove the molds and all the pieces come off easily. For this section I have sealed it and then added the two layers of green PVC. This is just to make sure it releases really easily. On this section, I have done all of my layers as well as the top wax coat, which will cure all the layers underneath. And as you can see here, I've preemptively drawn a line where I will cut off the edges so that everything is smooth, as well as marked where I will drill the holes um, so that I can bolt everything together when making the side table or when it's in storage. This is the side I'm currently working on. After I sealed it, I did three of the layers of just resin really lightly. This is the, the brush coat or the print coat so that I get all of the details. And you can see there's um, a little bit of messiness with the glass layup and that just comes from me trying to work vertically as well as it being a thicker fiberglass but as far as the mold goes, it will be fine because I have those layers of just plain resin underneath. It'll have a really smooth detail coat. Right now I'm going to be laying the last layer of glass and then I can paint that and then wax it before getting ready to do the last side.
I've now finished all the parts of the mold and all of the parts have also been waxed so they're fully cured. I have cut off the crust all around. You can see so all of the edges are smooth and not sharp as well as it just cleans everything up. And I have drilled holes. This I will use to bolt the piece together and I always drill the holes before I take the mold apart for the first time. That way it will never be as perfect as it is right now. So now I get to go through one of my favorite parts of the process, which is taking the mold apart for the first time, prying it open and see the, the negative space revealed. Here is the positive of the table. I've taken off most of the mold parts and you can see in the process it gets just a tiny bit messy. The top part of the mold which I did in one piece and these are just pieces of the drywall compound that stuck but you can see they come off pretty easily. The PVC sealant that I used allows it to come off This part always feels so satisfying, especially when it comes off really easily. Here is the cannibalized version of my tea table, which in other episodes you've seen me work so delicately and so meticulously on. It has, on its way out of the mold, I get a bit rough with it and I just want to go over a few parts of what you're seeing here. So the green is the PVA. That is actually what is releasing this piece from the fiberglass mold I made on top of it. As you can see here, the resin did hit the foam in a couple places, which makes it melt a little bit. This is why I spend so much time sealing my piece before I start making the mold. You can see the foam is exposed here as well, but there is no melting. Where it did melt was along the seam here and here, and that is where I made my parting line with a tool before adding my paper and blue tape parting line that you saw earlier. So there is a small amount that is allowed to get in through there, but the, the paper takes up almost the entire width of that line. So there might be an infinitesimal amount that seeps through and melts the interior, but it doesn't affect the mold as long as you clean up the edges afterwards which is what I did and the edges are super clean and there's no issues, but there have been times in the past where I didn't spend the time to really make sure all of these pieces that are exposed were sealed and it's just caused a disaster, a huge mess. This attaches to the mold and just, it makes, a lot more cleanup for myself than I would ever want so it's been really rewarding to see that my preemptive steps have saved me what could have been a lot more work also by taking the mold out and destroying it in the process I get to see the thickness of the interior which I don't I don't know I, I can approximate, but until I get to this point, I don't really know for sure. So it's about this thick. So any of my internal components need to be thinner. So there will be a small amount of air throughout the piece. And I may use a thicker 
fabric, which will mean I don't need as many layers to be as strong so that I don't get too close to making it so the mold doesn't fit back together. This is one of the parts that is the messiest, but also the most exciting. So now I'm going to wash the pieces of the mold so that I can prep it and start making the, the first tea table tomorrow. Here I have the finished mold for my tea table. As you can see, I have cleaned everything out and then waxed it and prepared it. Bolted it together so that the three parts in the bottom become one piece and then the top is already a single piece. So next I can start making the physical table.